Since May 2020, China and India have been locked in a military standoff along the Sino-Indian border. In mid-June, a fierce hand-to-hand -hand skirmish broke out between Chinese and Indian soldiers in the Galwan Valley region, involving an estimated 600 troops on both sides. Officially, 20 Indian soldiers were killed in the Galwan Valley skirmish. Unconfirmed sources say that the Chinese side suffered over 40 casualties. In early September, both sides fired warning shots at the border. News reports say Indian soldiers fired shots after spotting Chinese soldiers armed with spears and other melee weapons approaching their position. The firing of warning shots by both sides represented an escalation of tensions, given long-held protocol not to use firearms at the disputed border. Indian and Chinese diplomatic and military representatives have held disengagement talks on several occasions since May. However, efforts at de-escalation have thus far only worked to keep the peace for brief stretches before China resumes provocation. In a September 4th radio interview, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo noted that the Chinese People's Liberation Army has moved more forces to the Sino-India border than any time since the early 1960s. Indian newspaper The Economic Times wrote in a September 10 article that China has amassed about 50,000 troops surface-to-air missiles, a large section of rocket forces, and close to 150 fighter aircrafts within close distance of the Sino-India border. The Chinese Communist Party's desire to survive and dominate drives much of what it does, including foreign policy. China is fighting India in 2020 because the Chinese Communist Party believes the border dispute is beneficial to preserving regime survival. Given China's present geopolitical situation and domestic woes, we look at five reasons behind Beijing's belligerence at the Sino-Indian border. First, the Chinese Communist Party needs to distract the Chinese people from a perfect storm of domestic problems. Problems include a coronavirus epidemic, a COVID-wrecked economy in rapid decline, local government fiscal problems, a mounting debt crisis, a property bubble about to burst, sharply rising food prices, food shortages, and natural disasters like historic floods and destructive typhoons. The Chinese Communist Party cannot allow the Chinese people to dwell on domestic problems lest they begin to seriously question the party's political legitimacy and endanger the regime. Thus, for the sake of regime survival, the Chinese Communist Party has to manufacture external crises to rouse nationalism and divert the Chinese people's attention away from local issues. Fighting with India in disputed territory offers Beijing a chance to grab some territory and play up a much-needed overseas victory when geopolitical sentiment is turning against China. As long as hostile foreign sentiments don't abate and China's domestic issues remain largely unresolved, the Chinese Communist Party will always have a reason to provoke India. Second, the Chinese Communist Party needs to distract the United States and other countries from some of its other malign operations. These actions include the cover-up of the Wuhan coronavirus, the imposition of a draconian national security law over Hong Kong, efforts to interfere in the 2020 Taiwan presidential election, and increasing militarization of the South China Sea. The Chinese Communist Party is likely banking on the possibility that a Sino-Indian border crisis will shift international attention away from its more serious transgressions, giving the party breathing room against international pressure. Third, for manufactured external crises to be useful instead of dangerous, they must be controllable and not overly provocative. For the Chinese Communist Party, inciting perennial border clashes with India fits these criteria well. First, it is not particularly controversial for skirmishes to break out along the Sino-Indian border because such clashes have occurred periodically since the late 1950s. Military action in the remote, mostly uninhabited mountain regions is less likely to cause serious international consequences than elsewhere. Second, seen from the perspective of military doctrine, land battles are easier to control than sea or air engagements. Third, the United States doesn't have a presence at or near the Sino-Indian border, unlike in the South China and East China Seas. The Chinese military has been considerably more restrained in these disputed waters, especially when U.S. aircraft carriers were sent to operate there in past months. Fourth, the Chinese Communist Party hopes to intimidate neighboring countries through successful skirmishes against India, making these countries easier for Beijing to manipulate. Fifth and finally, the Chinese Communist Party needs to accrue bargaining chips to deal with a United States that is serious about standing up to its Marxist-Leninist, techno-totalitarian regime.
Many of the Trump administration's actions over the past two years target the Communist Party's weaknesses, including trade relations, technology, ideology, human rights, and stronger ties with Taiwan. The Trump administration has noticeably ramped up its efforts to counter the Chinese Communist Party starting May 2020, a period that coincides with escalated tensions along the Sino-Indian border. Beijing could be looking to offer up the prospect of a more permanent Sino-Indian de-escalation together with a general toning down of hostilities with China's other neighbors in exchange for a return to the friendlier Sino-U.S. ties of the engagement era. So will the Chinese Communist Party meet its strategic goals by fighting India? We believe that the odds of the latest Sino-India border clash backfiring on Beijing are substantially higher than the scenario where it achieves its goals. Here are three reasons why. First, the border skirmishes could prove to be less controllable than the Chinese Communist Party believes. Inflamed passions and itchy trigger fingers could spark a minor armed conflict. Such a border war would become a hugely unwelcome drain on China's finances and compound Beijing's existing problems. Second, India might not have the patience to keep playing the Chinese Communist Party's border games. Subsequent PRC border provocations after the September 10 disengagement agreement by both parties in Moscow could result in tough Indian action. And because the Chinese Communist Party is very concerned with the notion of preserving face, border confrontations can easily lead to a larger armed conflict when push comes to shove. In an actual arms contest, the odds are that China, and not India, finds itself on the short end of the stick, despite the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda bravado. For instance, the Chinese side will face greater difficulties in supplying its troops and acclimating them to the Himalayan region, not to mention unrest among the ethnic Tibetans who make up the local population. Third, the United States and the international community could simply ignore the Chinese Communist Party's bait and press ahead with holding the regime accountable for the pandemic and Hong Kong. In this scenario, the Sino-India border clash, far from covering for Beijing's deeper agenda, will become yet another point of evidence justifying the need to get tough against the People's Republic of China. Indeed, by inciting and continuing its provocations against India, the Communist Party could be merely digging itself into a deeper geopolitical quagmire. Sharp escalation of the 2020 Sino-India border conflict will heighten political risks for the Chinese Communist Party and General Secretary Xi Jinping, who is locked in a factional struggle with rivals in the regime leadership. Tracking the crises at the Sino-India border and how it affects elite politics in the Chinese Communist Party will allow observers to anticipate the arrival of political black swans in China.